What is up YouTube? So I recently just got through my first legal case and it was a temporary restraining order and this is how I got through it, right? So in today's video, I'll show you like the exact uh, statement I received from Amazon in case any of you guys are watching this and you can see if like it's something similar to maybe what you guys have gone. Um, and I'll tell you what I did, right? In terms of like the process and I'll tell you like the mistakes that I did throughout the process and how I got mine resolved. So just about two weeks ago on Monday, February 7th, I got hit with a temporary restraining order, right? That was issued by a federal court in America, right? Saying that basically there's some case that where I'm listed in it. And the shitty part about it is that we were, we were writing to inform you that your disbursements from your seller account have been placed on hold, which is really shitty. So that meant Basically, as soon as I saw this message, I was like, I am not going to have access to my money, uh, which is going to suck, right? Of course, like if you don't get an Amazon payout, that just sucks because usually you're, you, we already only get it every two weeks, right? Versus like every day, maybe like some other channels like eBay or so. So it's just a pain in the ass. Luckily, once I saw this, I was, I, I already had savings in a bank account uh, for my business to last like three months. So I'm not worried about that. But I did let my team know right away, like, hey, we do have this issue on in place uh, and we have enough funds to last us three months in case anything, in case this doesn't get resolved. So basically, I went ahead and I emailed this person, which technically is not something I recommend you do. When you get into a legal case like this, I recommend if I were to do it again, I would have just contacted a lawyer to contact them. But what I did was, so as soon as I got this, uh, I started doing some research, uh, Googling, YouTubing, um, but the best uh, source of help was through MBS, which is where this hat's from. So this is the Million Dollar Sellers Club, which is the Amazon focused mastermind. Um, I've been in it since the very beginning and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you have, uh, if you're doing at least seven figures or more in your Amazon business, this is a really good network of people to like learn from. Uh, exchange ideas from when it comes to learning stuff about Amazon and staying up to date on it this group in itself is like how I do it right so I you know I just posted my story about it and then people posted things uh, inside the comments like about suggestions on how it help and with contacts of lawyers so what I did was I contacted three different lawyers well I guess right before that let me just tell you what I did and <laughs> so you guys don't do it what I did before that was I actually emailed this guy Ben at Masco Law and he was just like uh, he was like oh could you send me the sales history of the ASIN of this ASIN right and I sent it to him technically uh, after talking to other lawyers and all my friends you should never give just give over information like that so easily to like I guess the enemy right in this situation you should only do it through your legal team right so i sent it over to them i tried looking up like this company couldn't find anything about them so it was like a pain in the ass luckily i only sold 60 of these items so it wasn't even that big of an issue if we were to like get in trouble for it in my opinion because you know 60 items is too much in damages unless it like really really costs us a lot the item itself was a pistol speed loader. Uh, this is from the wholesale side of my business, not the private label side. And uh, basically, because I wasn't able to find a case or really find any other details around this when doing Googling myself, I was like, all right, it's time to bring in a lawyer to make sure this gets resolved because you know, I want access to my funds, right? And so what I did was based off of the recommendation of the group, I talked to three different lawyers. I talked to Amazon seller lawyers, which I have used in the past before with success. I talked to Mario with sqgo.com um, and that was a very positive conversation. And then I talked with Casey Hewitt, who I ended up hiring. All three are like solid recommendations. I would have felt comfortable hiring all three. I ended up going with Casey. She charges $450 an hour. And for this case, right, this temporary restraining order, she didn't want to charge a retainer, which I thought was good because Amazon seller lawyers they're charging 400 an hour, but they wanted a $15,000 retainer. And from what I understand, uh, anywhere from like five to 10,000 is actually a normal retainer, which I didn't know about beforehand until I got into this, which was interesting. And then another thing too, is when I talked to Mario, he was actually pretty solid. He works out of California. 
but he said he couldn't work on the case since the lawyer, this guy Ben Masco, is from Virginia. But actually, after I talked to Casey, she told me it, it doesn't matter because this one's a federal court case. So like, you know, a lawyer from anywhere should technically work. So once I contacted her, she was actually able to find the, the case that I was listed in and she was able to like pull the reason uh, for it um, and find the actual case. So basically I was listed on uh, with a bunch of other sellers because there was a factory and uh, there was a brand and it wasn't even that brand that started, that had a factory in China counterfeiting their products. And then so I just got roped into this like dumb lawsuit because I sold this product in the past and it was it came from the same factory or something like that. And that was basically the story. But what I did was, so, you know, after talking about them, I said, Casey, I'll go with you, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing that she did was like within the same day, she was really fast with it. I was talking to her and I think her husband slash business partner, John, I think is his name. And they sent an email right away saying like, they're, you know, working on behalf of me, blah, blah, blah. And it actually went really, really smooth. So I'll actually show you the emails. Hope she doesn't get mad at me for, <laughs> for showing this, but uh, I think it's all really positive. All right, so, so Casey sent an email on behalf of our business for us to say that she's working with us on the TRO with their client and try and get the copy of the complaint for a review, blah, blah, blah. My case and my client purchased these products from a distributor, so they're disappointed to see that we're involved with a lawsuit. You know, and she just very normal email. And then we found that we actually got the actual complaint. They sent it back to us, which is good. And then once we got that over, you know, basically we found out like it was just a misunderstanding. So I got, I looked out on this one, but even then it's still a little bit scary to have your money frozen. But in this case, you know, it was just basically we sent over our ace and sales. And because we had very little sales, we weren't really like a big target to go after. So that's why we got away. But I, I assume maybe if we sold like 5,000 or if we sold like the actual counterfeit units, then we would have gotten in a lot worse trouble. But just to kind of sum up everything, if you get in this situation, I highly recommend you get a lawyer first and you don't say anything to their lawyer, right? That's where I made my, my, my mistake. I also sent over my Eastern sales history for that SKU, try and resolve it myself, which maybe I could have done, but technically best practices is not to do that. So don't do that either, right? So next time you get in this situation, I highly recommend contacting one of the three lawyers that um, I talked about, Amazon Seller Lawyers, Mario from SK, SKQ Go, or Casey Hewitt. And if you look up Casey Hewitt, you'll see her law firm. So I'll just pull it up for you guys so you guys can see it. Uh, it, would, it would just be this website right here. But yeah, uh, I really liked my experience with them. I was happy with it. My account got resolved. The funds got unfrozen. So can't really complain, but it was a little bit of a scare. So um, I hope with this video, it helps somebody out there navigate through this. And then other than that, I would just say that do a good job of just aggregating all the information into a Google Drive folder. So I put all my source history into one folder, the copies of all the emails, ASIN, SKUs, title information, and all that. So it's just all organized in one place. So when they're reviewing it, you they have all the information up front to give you the answer right away in your initial call. Oh, the one thing I also say about Casey too is uh, she didn't charge a retainer, but she does charge a consultation fee, which was like, I think $250. Um, while I would say like Amazon seller lawyers and Mario didn't charge a consultation fee. So just be aware of that. But other than that, have a good rest of your day. I hope this video helps somebody out there. Stay safe. See you guys.